All right, today I'm unboxing something incredible, testing it out for you, and honestly, surprising myself. This is a really interesting one because I'm not usually surprised by different supplies, but these surprised me, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Lainey, I'm a wedding invitation designer and I teach people how to design wedding invitations. And today I'm going to unbox these velvet envelopes, show you how I tested them. And oh my gosh, these things are incredible. I'm super excited to use them. So first of all, I sort of apologize for this, but I am not going to tell you where I got these envelopes because the supply is limited. And as an invitation designer, I wanna maintain a little bit of mystery. I also think if you're DIYing and you wanna use velvet envelopes, you'll see they're a little bit weird. And I think that you should rely on a professional at least a little bit, I'm not trying to disparage your DIY abilities. These are just kind of crazy to work with. And so I think you're gonna have the best results if you rely on a designer. If you are someone who designs wedding invitations, if you have my print and paper vendor guide, it's in there, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to share it with you. Um, and if you wanna join our monthly membership for stationary designers, the link is in the description of this video. It's called Stationary School. Okay, so first of all, let's get these out. I got two colors. Oh, they're so, I can't, I can't decide which one's more beautiful. I dropped them. <laughs> So first of all, I got this beautiful emerald green. And then I also got, of course, the dusty blue. It's it's just beautiful. It's incredible. This has real velvet texture. Um, it's thin though. I was surprised at how thin it is. Um, it's velvet paper. It's not velvet fabric. And it's got this black uh, kind of paper on the inside, uh, you could add an envelope liner if you wanted to, you'd still see some of the black. And of course these are ungummed, there's no adhesive on them. Um, they're both incredible. I feel like you can see the texture more on the blue one, but love how it's reflecting the light there. This one just feels like royal to me. They also come in like burgundy and black. There's five or six different colors. Um, and I really wanted this one to work with gold ink. I was. So excited about that. So first I tested out calligraphy on the green one and I tested a few different inks. Um, this is the Dr. Martens, here we go. This is the Dr. Martens iridescent gold. Um, it, I did not love it. I couldn't get the upstrokes to not bleed into the velvet very much. This is the bleed proof white. It's not quite as opaque as you would want. Um, on here, one of these is, this one is gouache over here. It kind of did the same thing, um, just kind of kept bleeding into it. But what was really, really interesting to me, I did not expect this at all, is that Sumi ink worked super well. Like, I would totally mail this. Looks great, it was actually really easy to write on this. Um, you can see that it bleeds a little, pay attention to that M. The downstroke there it definitely bleeds a little because it is a fabric um, and all the little fibers catch everything but i was very surprised because usually these inks all work better <laughs> than sumi ink on weird surfaces so i was very surprised by that but love that um i don't think the black would really show up well on the green which is so unfortunate because i i just love the green and wanted it to work so so well um so then i tried a paint pen it's like, it's fine. I like that I was able to get gold on green. Um, this is the Sakura Pen Touch, which is one of my favorite paint pens. Um, I don't have any of the smaller ones, so I would wanna try the fine point to see if it worked, but it's, it's fine. It's a little bleedy, it's a little bold. It's definitely not the like royal beautiful look that I was really going for. And that I think you get I mean, it's not royal, but you get the clean calligraphy look, I think, with the Sumi ink, which I was very shocked by. Um, last of me trying to write with my hand, with my hand, what else would I write with? Um, me trying to write on these, uh, I used this brush pen, which is the Tombow uh, Fudenosaki, Fudenosuki. Uh, can we get it? Can we zoom in on this one? 
There we go. There we go. Good focus. Um, this is the navy blue one. I forget if that's the hard tip or the soft tip. I think it's the soft tip one. Uh, I assume the black one would work just as well, but worked great. Would totally mail this. This might be my favorite of all of the handwritten options because it didn't bleed as much as the um, Sumi ink. Mine is a little bit out of ink. It's not as juicy as it could be. And I think the velvet exacerbates that a little bit, but still really nice. Um, to me, the velvet feels really formal and this type of calligraphy feels a little bit more casual. So I, I don't love it together because I feel like there's a mismatch. It was the easiest and in my opinion, the best result, but I, I just don't love it together. So then I tried printing on these. I risked ruining both of my printers, this guy and my inkjet that's down here to ruin this or to test this for you. I risked ruining both of them. So first, what I really, really wanted to work so bad on this dusty blue was the white ink from this laser jet over here. Um, I have another video about printing on envelopes with laser versus inkjet and the sizing was done wrong, but I didn't want to run it through a second time because I didn't want to ruin it. Um, first of all, um, incredible. Like it's beautiful, right? It's the most beautiful thing you might have ever seen in your life. However, as you can see here, if you rub over it, it does smear. So this is, was not able to really take on the velvet, which makes me really sad. Uh, this is not to say that there's no laser printer out there that could do it. I think some commercial level ones could do it. I don't know if they'd be willing to risk ruining their printers to test it out, but you never know, you could get it because, and if you're curious about it ruining the printer, the reasoning there is that the little fibers can get stuck on the drum, stuck in the printer, it's a whole thing. I would not, I would not put this through my printer again. It made me uneasy. Uh, if it was thicker, I definitely wouldn't have, but I liked that it was thin enough like a normal envelope. So anyway, most beautiful thing that could have existed in the entire world. However, probably not gonna work out, unfortunately. So then I ran through my inkjet, which I have the Canon Pixma Pro 100. And so what we found was that it would not feed through the inkjet um, as is. So I ended up just taking a five by seven imitation. I would do it with a square one. This was just the one I had on hand and putting it in there. First of all, this color combo, incredible, unique, great. Would someone do it? Um, so then it was able to feed better. This was actually too thin and kind of floppy to feed, which I was very surprised by. So once I put this in here, it was able to feed better. Um, if you've printed on each jet, you should print it open flap. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so what I found, maybe to be expected, is that first of all, I got these like stripes, which I assume are just from the different rollers and ink cartridges and stuff. As it goes through the printer, they're, they don't, they're not terrible. Who knows, velvet envelopes are beautiful and in the mail, that velvet's gonna get like, you know, smooshed around all over the place anyway. Um, but I did get all of this smudging. The good thing is that when I, you know, went through and rubbed it, you can see if we can get a, we can get a focus. Um, when I went through and rubbed this, it actually stays really well, which I was, I was honestly surprised by because if you print on metallic envelopes, the laser jet, they will stay, but the ink jet, they'll smear. So I was, I was a little surprised by this. There's probably some science reason why that works. Um, so I thought this was beautiful, just too many smudges. And so what I did was I changed it to fast mode. I also removed the stroke. I thought it was gonna print too thin without a stroke, but it printed fine. Um, and when I put that, okay, put the card in, print open flap, you're still gonna get all of these stripes, which I believe strongly would mostly go in the mail or people would not even notice them. And how beautiful. They're thin lines, so I'm not saying it's perfect. There's a little bit of black smudging over here, which maybe you could get off with like a kneaded eraser. Um, you might, you still might want to print a little thicker stroke. And then if you can see on this M right here at the top, there is a place where the printer kind of 
got stuck. There was a little bit of a mistake there where the printer kind of got, got stuck and moved a little bit, which is probably due to the velvet. So my verdict with printing is just that I think it could happen. I think you gotta you gotta put a piece of paper in it. You gotta do it open flat on fast mode. You gotta have the right font and colors. You couldn't do, you can't print on an inkjet in white, so you couldn't do it on a color like this. I wouldn't do it for a large order. I probably wouldn't do it for any client order over like 20 <laughs> um, or a very, very special client. And I would order a ton of overs, but I think it could be done. It's possible. The easiest thing to do, however, we didn't talk about this yet, is just to use labels. So I love address labels like this. It says, see you in España, return address, main address here. So then what you do with the label is you put it like this. So we have the main address here um, for this type, for this specific project. We had another sticker, which I wouldn't do on these velvet because I wouldn't want to cover up any more of it, but we had another sticker with their names on it. So you put their names here and then you fold the label over and it actually helps close the flap, which is nice. You still want to glue this closed, um, but it looks really nice. I think this would work perfectly on the velvet and would not, I think you wouldn't have any issues. I wouldn't use vintage postage on the velvet because I don't know that it would stick super well. Uh, you'd have to probably find a specific type of adhesive, but I do think that the sticker postage that has been coming out would work fine on this. So this would be my number one for a large project, a client project, if you have 100 envelopes. This is what I would do. Um, if you have a very small amount and are talented with printing, you might be able to do the inkjet one. And then if you really wanted to write on it, you could use Sumi ink. If you're a calligrapher, I would recommend using um, this brush pen, which is again, the Tombow Budena Suki. I'm bad at pronouncing that, so please forgive me. So that's my verdict on the velvet envelopes. Let me know what questions you have, and if you're interested, feel free to reach out.